I think uh, the, the, the key ingredients, I guess, to, to putting together a well-balanced cocktail list, um, I mean, you've got to first and foremost think about the basics. You need to be able to, to make, these, make these drinks in a busy bar environment. So you need to think about the practicality um, of what needs doing. And that's, that's in terms of um, how much prep is required, how many ingredients go into the drink, um, what glassware they go in. Um, I've seen many cocktail lists that, um, that, that all, you know, 80% of the drinks require martini glasses, for instance, and all of a sudden you find yourself Friday night, 9 p.m., at a martini glass and everyone's scratching their head. Why is that? It's because every drink's in a martini glass. Uh, you've got to have a balance of, um, of shaken drinks, disturbed drinks, uh, to built drinks as well. I guess this puts the pressure off, um, I guess, your, your shakers. I mean, if you have to shake every single drink, it means you have to clean every single drink, every shaker as well. Looking at the, the balance of the, of the spirits, you know, you want, to, you want to have a good balance and hit every sort of demographic. Uh, maybe introduce your, your, your customers into some new, more exotic spirits, so whether it's things like like Calvados or Grappa or, or Arak or, or Kummel, whatever it is um, you want to use, you want to make sure that, um, that the, the cocktail list is balanced um, between them as well. Um, and then lastly, you want to make sure you don't have too many drinks. You know, it's, it's always best to have, uh, have, have quality over quantity. Um, that might be seven drinks, it might be you know, 17. Um, but make sure that every drink that's on that list is an absolute belter of a drink. Yes, and it, and it suits the season. We all know that sort of that, that, that horror couple of months of the year, usually around, um, usually around the Melbourne Cup time, that sort of November, where limes skyrocket to $110 a kilo. And the reason for that is, you know, you, it's very hard to grow limes anywhere in Australia at that time of the year. So uh, I, I'd like to see a lot of bartenders, you know, moving away from, from lime-based drinks at that time of the year. And, you know, lemons are probably at their cheapest at that time as well. So, so again, you know, manoeuvring their list so that they're using, you know, lemon as a citrus element instead of costing their bar and costing their owners, you know, 40 cents for every wedge of lime they, they put into a drink. Um, that in mind as well, I mean, the same applies for, for things like strawberries, you know, making use of them in the middle of summer and not selling them in the middle of winter when they, 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 t they taste like water or, or even worse when cherries are imported from the States at around about June, July. Um, obviously they look very pretty, but they, they taste like nothing and they're expensive, so, um, you know, pay close attention to the seasons. Chefs have been doing it for forever now, you know, why, why, why shouldn't we do it, I guess.